Good day, guys. Come here. Welcome back to Language and News from the Future. So, all right, we the end of the celebrations of the sixth year anniversary, aka the end of 6.0 era. We are now marching on to the path of 7.0, and coming for you guys, the first pair of heroines who will be paving the way for 7.0 is none other than. The heroines from the Languiza Millennium and our Century WS, the two female leading characters, Arya and Ilya. So, you guys have already seen them on the previous video that will be heroines, heroes, and heroines that will be released in the upcoming banner. But, um, surprise, 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 they are just released right after our Empress. And yeah, and yup, on part one of the video, we'll be featuring the younger sister, Arya, and next we'll be featuring on part two, the elder sister, Ilya. And yup, um, and surprisingly, the younger sister, Arya, this time around, uh, despite being the character with the A opening, she is not. Her rating for PvP is not as as strong as people hope for. However, um, she's definitely one of the top tier for PvE. So, alright, the usual stuff. Part one will be featuring the voice actress for the characters and probably any vo um, background story or voice pack. On part two, we go through the main stuff. Everyone likes the characters, skills, talent. 3C effects. Then on last part of video featuring the pros and cons of the characters, how the skills gimmick work, and then we will end off with characters item builds. So are you guys ready? Let's get started. So alright, before I continue, um break and thanks for information shared by the language and mobile app, Mongha Moinsan, so you and let me with a slip of my hand to zoom in the art of Arya. Oops. So whether she's strong or not, well I see Opai, I draw. <laughs> So this is the character that has been voiced by the same voice actress. So the character, the person who voiced Arya is none other than Miss Miyu Tomita, and this is one um a few of the more recent and famous work she has been involved. On the left and right, um, I do not watch any of that, but I do know the name. On the left is from Kaguya Sama Love Is War Ultra Romantic. So she voiced on one of her characters from there. If I'm not wrong, it's known as Miko Lino. Then on the right uh, is from Gundam, the witch from Mercury, uh, one of the maybe supporting characters, um, which a lot of fans call as the butt head because her hairstyle is that of Viria. So you have two very big buns behind uh, the back of her hair, the head. So right, um, relationship they have with the characters is the main protagonist from WS. So because a treasure um, from the village that they live in has been stolen by some thief, so the two twins, Miko, two twins princesses, are in a set of a journey and apparently they met up with Shion, uh, Tiana and Kohs and seek for their help to assist them in retrieving back the treasure artifact. And during the journey, you know, this is where the romance started. Both of them 
start to develop weird feelings for him. <laughs> okay, and this is a chibi art featuring Aria by Granda Curry, mounts out to Liana. And this is a voice pack featuring uh, for Liana, so you guys can hear it out. Here we go. So okay, what is what she is saying is hi. Are you searching for the path of peace? If that's the case, may I travel with you? Oh I am the priestess from the village of Jigura. My name is Arya and please take care of me. Yep, something around there. So yep, she is the Miko or Priestess from the town of Jigura, so let's hear it again. And yup, with this we will end the introductions for the characters and now we'll be going to part 2 of the video where we will feature the characters Faction Buff, Talent, Exclusive Skills and Tracy. Here we go! Alright, and now we have come to part of a video featuring the skills disclosure of Alia. So here we go, and whoops. Oh, I. Hmm. Hmm. That was nice. <laughs> So alright, um, Alia, as you can see her factions Her factions are from Glory of Light, Princess and Origin. The great news is that uh, despite being one of the main characters in the storyline, um, they do not have protagonist faction buff, which um, I believe all of you uh, most of you do not really like <laughs> the faction buff. So right, um, a little bit backstory of the characters is that uh, one of the Queen Miko from the village of Jigura, uh, their tribe people has from every generation they have been protecting the ultimate weapon that used to destroy um, this place known as Suakutan. I'm sorry about this translation but I'm not sure how to do pronounce, pronounce that yet. Probably hopefully in future when any characters born from that place they will talk about it. So apparently after this final weapon has been stolen so Alia and her elder sister Ilya and together with the party of Shion they have been traveling on together on this adventure journey to seek back this lost treasure and okay guys watch to the end for the translations I've done for you so if you just want to check out the effect you can forward to the end but definitely we appreciate if you guys watch to the end with me all right okay this character is kind of um well she can be strong and weak because she's kind of a gamble character yes this despite being a miko she's more of a Characters taking chance, or should I say, she's a characters that depend on your luck. If your luck is good, she definitely gonna be stronger. If your luck is not that good, good luck to you. All right, the talent is known as 
lucky chapter. The effects are as follows. Number one, increase damage deal by 30%. Number two, gain three lucky buff effect at a step at a start. So there will be three type of lucky buff effect. The first is known as spirit spirit log. Okay, the effect is when you end your turn, heal allies two blocks around you based on your intelligence times one. The second luck effect is known as strong luck. The effect is increase attack intelligence by 10%. Third is known as good luck. When you end your turn, you will gain a random buff effect. Then do note that there can only be a maximum of three lucky buff effect of which it cannot be dispelled. Number three, at the start of the turn, you will gain one random type of lucky buff effect. Number four, when you have two or more same type of lucky buff effect, you will increase your character's unit range by plus two. Number five, at the end of the turn, if you have three type of the same lucky buff effect, refresh all your skills CD. And that's it for the tunneling effect. So as you can see, uh, she's definitely very decent as of the current uh, version and era. She has damage increment of 30%, despite um, she's kind of a semi-support character. Then um, the lung effect has different buffing or healing abilities. However, the, bu the buff you gain are random. As of now, you don't get to choose. So she's kind of um, similar to characters like CC White gimmick. So at the start, you already have like two tokens. Then every turn, uh, every start of your turn, you can gain another token. However, in this case, it's gaining random lucky buff effect. And in order to get very strong, she need to have two of the same kind of the lucky buff effect in order to gain range. Then also to um, in order to gain refreshing or skill CD, you need to have three. And the max she can hold on is three buff effects. So I'm not sure um, how you're gonna use it, but okay, well, let's find out more. And don't worry, we have the last part, talking about the pros and cons. So right, that's it for the talent effect. Now moving on to exclusive skill. Exclusive skill one. Mm, I have my own translation. I have this very funny. Uh, it, it looks funny enough to me from Google Translate. So the effect is roughly translated as time comes luck change or from google translate is every dog has his day <laughs> okay this is definitely a very weird translation but yep i kid you not you can you can check this word and that, that's what um google translate is going to give you that's a very weird translation so i think i'm going to choose with the one that i i did i did it time comes lux change is a 1c cost skills has a cd of one turn the range is two blocks the aoe type is single target magic so the effect are as follow number one choose one of the following effect and apply to an ally unit afterward for each type of lucky effect used for your ally you gain back the equal amount but random type of lucky buff effect. So the effects that you can cast um, depends on the type of luck. And sorry, it's not a magical single target. It's more of a 
support skills. However, um, it's not written as support, so it's just an active skills. All right, so if you have spirit luck, okay, so it, you have three types of blessing. In fact, one is the first one is based on the first uh, talent. In fact, spirit luck blessing. You will heal the unit 15% of the HP. Second, each additional spirit luck used will heal another 15%. Third, the max consume three consumption of three spirit luck, meaning you can heal up to a max of 45% of their unit HP. Second, the strong luck blessing will have the following effect. First, increase attack intelligence by 15% for two turns. Second, for each additional strong luck buff you have, increase the buff stack by 5%. Third, the max you can consume is 3 buff effect. So meaning 15% um, plus 5% plus 5% so the max you can gain is 25% attack intelligence increment for 2 turns. Third is good luck blessing. Okay, So it will take the good luck buff effect. So the effect as follow. First, apply one random buff effect on the target for two turns. Second, each additional good luck buff let you gain an extra buff effect. Third, it the max you can consume is three buff effect. So uh, by default, you will apply one random buff on the target for two turns. Then if you have Three, the max you will let the ally gain is three buff effects. And last but not least, the second effect, number two, after using any of the above effect on the allies, the buff turn you had will not be reduced and you can act again. And this skills act again is based off your remaining mobility. Meaning if Re Ilya can only move 3 blocks, she already moved 3 blocks and then she casts the skills. She can act again but she cannot move. Uh, she can only stand on the area she's standing on to take another action. So um, not a very great act again however. Well, it's an act again skill so it's not too bad. So this is um, more of a support and buffing skills for the allies. Yes, it's a bit long so definitely you guys got to... Um, Look at the translations I've done for you guys at the end. And another thing to think though is, um, this is why I say she is a semi support because she has skills like Heaven Sanctuary, the AOE skills, um, which is a skill that deals quite a lot of damage and it's an AOE skill, so she's not too shabby. Okay, exclusive skills too, roughly translated as Lucky Strike or Lucky Shot. It's a 2C skill, has a CD of 2. The range is 2 block, but AoE type is Magical Single Target. So this skill is much um, easier and shorter compared to the exclusive skill one. The effect are as follow. Number 1, attack and deal 1.4 times damage on a target enemy. Number two, heal HP after the battle based on 30% of the damage deal. Number three, when you have two or more of the same type of lucky buff effect, this battle will ignore 20% magic defense of the enemy. So this is kind of similar to the HP draining um, Dark Scythe ability that um, initially came up from Bozo. You can suck in HP from enemy and you're doing battle you'll reduce 20% of the magic defense. However, uh, this is this case uh, depending on the same type of luck, the lucky buff effect you have. If you have two at minimum two of the same kind, 
you will instead ignore 20% of a magic defense, so this is not a debuff, and you get a heal, and the damage is 1.5 times, so not too shabby, she is able to go support, AoE, or single target. So that's it for all her exclusive skills, and last but not least, we have come to the tree C. The tree C is known as Judgment of God's Favor. They have both passive and active. At a CD of 3 turns, the range is 2 blocks. The AoE type is Magical Single Target. So we'll be going through on the passive effect first. Number 1. When you have 3 or more same type of Lucky buff on you, your enemy will not be able to counter attack when you initiate attack that goes into battle. So yeah, that's it, it's a one-liner. So um, so introducing the 3C passive, um, as you can see the conditions is a bit harsh based on my understanding of what I have seen because um, you need to have three of the same type. You can't have anything that's different and the max luck you can gain is three stacks. So you have to keep um, gamble for the chances to shuffle and gain the three types of the same. You are in short, I guess this is taken from poker, the game um, three of a kind. Yep, you need to have a three of a kind. Only then um, your enemies will not be able to counter attack when you initiate uh, attack that goes into battle. So with this 3C, it kind of restrict the line that she should be more of going to choosing the single target attack path. Because um, based on the effect, it strongly encourages you to have um, single target skills to fight against enemies that need to go into battle. Because if you happen to have three of the kind of the same kind or same type the enemy will not be able to counter attack so that makes you uh, invulnerable or should i say yep you're invulnerable to it all right that's it coming to the active skills the effect us follow number one attack and do 1.6 times damage to target enemy number two after battle for each type of the same lucky buff you had, you can move one block after battle. So the maximum you can move is three. Number three, when you end your turn, you can gain an additional lucky buff effect of your choice. Number four, the lucky buff you gain lasts for two turns and cannot be replaced use up or dispel oh okay so um they give you an option however because um this is under the active skill section so um based on the text here later we will try to find out more because um I'm not sure if it is a must that you got to attack the enemy and then after battle then you gain this after you end your turn you gain an additional lucky buff effect of your choice if you have to do that that's that kind of sucks however um, if it's separate you don't do that that would be cool because um, the minimum you you will be able to reach some of the minimum requirement is to have two of the same kind However, it'd be great if you can get um, three of the same kind within the turn. I suppose that uh, will happen only after the exclusive equipment is released for her in the future. But one thing to take note is that um, This lucky effect that you choose will last for two turns, so you definitely got to um, spam it or spam it to or combo it with anything that you want to do. 
uh, within the two turns. So, yup, that's it for the skills of Alia. So, overall, personally, I think she's not bad. Looks above average to me, however, um, based on the Apex meta in PvP only. Now we are talking about um, she's said to not be strong, um, especially the fact that she will need to have three of the same kind or same type to be fully buffed up and um, in compari um, comparison to her elder sister so she's definitely a great pve characters but um we can't say the same for pvp so well we will give you more i'll give you more updates should there be any more news and now we're going to Part 3, aka the last part, the pros and cons and the item builds for Aria. Here we go. So alright, we are now at the last part. And before we go through the pros and cons, this is some of the things you guys might be interested to know. So these are her bonds unlocking conditions, so to... Uh, the last two bond I'll just go through um, for defense bond you'll need the help of Ilya aka her elder sis um, to unlock the defense bond whereas for the last bond uh, you just need to unlock uh, one of the class you got to master one of the the class I'm gonna presume is the holy unit class and and that's it so it's very easy to use her uh, it's, it's much easier she's much more friendly because um she only need one characters to unlock the bond and it's only for the defense bond so if you're doing pve content um usually you wouldn't let her die or rush rush her up in the battlefield so um don't worry too much about it then this is the casting items uh runes emblem you need from up to rank level or rank one to level one to level ten. Oh, sorry. She, uh, both of her class are holy unit. So um, to unlock the last bond, you got to unlock the first path. Uh, The God Blaster, the God, the God Blesser, <laughs> yep. And these are the stats, so you guys can see. So definitely, we'll be choosing the first class because of the higher HP. Other than that, um, other than defense and HP, the rest is the same. But we can ignore the fact about attack. They're right. Um, the bond for level, f the hard, uh, hard, big hard bond for level four, level seven. So for the first path, uh, uh, level four, the God Blesser, and the second one is the whole Holy, uh, Holy one. Uh, this is just like loosely translate. So pardon me. So the first one is going to be a level four. When your unit HP is below 70%, when you go into battle, damage you take will be reduced by 10%. Then the one at level 7 is, if your unit has 5 and or above buff effect, when you go into battle, the damage you do will be increased by 10%. So the second path, Level 4, when you need have 5 or more buff, when you go into battle, the damage you take will be reduced by 10%. Then level 7 is, when battling with unit HP percentage that is lower than you, when you go into battle, increase battle by 10%. Hmm, in my opinion, both of them are not that good, so... Hmm, 
because the requirement is either requirement for HP value or if not you need to have five or more buff mm. I just feel that it's not that top tier but that's just my opinion all right so now we'll be talking about the buff effect and its pros and cons and oh yeah forgot to say um so on this part very great thanks for information shared by the language uh, data bank and by the player who actually shared his finding so this is the icon of the three type of lucky buff so as you can see from icon the first one is a sword the sword is strong luck the second one that looks like glory of light faction buff is good luck so last but not least is spirit luck so as a fighter or supporter, um, a talent provide damage increment and self-stacking um, offensive buff. Then she also have other not bad effect. <laughs> I guess that is what they say. Okay, um, okay, so basically this is the three types of icon you will see, then I guess we'll be going into deeper about the buff effect that you will gain from good luck, because good luck lets you gain random buff effect. Because um, for, for the strong luck, they're just talking about uh, the effect will give her um, intelligence increment and can be stacked then for spirit luck is for um, healing that's all so right for good luck this are the following random buff effect you again so from the first to last there's total of two four six seven type so the first one is damage received reduced by 20 percent second is every turn you heal 20 percent of unit max hp Number three, increase defense by 20%. Number four, increase damage deal by 20%. Five, increase magic defense by 30%. Six, increase attack intelligence by 20%. Last but not least, everyone's favorite is giving mobility. However, um, unlike Tenyo, it's not a plus three, it's uh, increased mobility by plus two. Then we've been talking about she can gain the maximum of three lucky buff effect only. So um, it states that the talent effect, the maximum she can gain or the number of lucky buff that can coexist is up to three. So every start of the turn, Arya will randomly gain one and the, the one that she gained the latest will replace the first lucky buff effect on her character stack so I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like so you guys can see the one that is being highlighted in the red box that is the first item column uh, or the buff column so the first buff icon from her talent will be replaced on the next turn when she gain a new buff uh, the lucky buff effect so this is how the things work so when she gain two of the same kind she will have range increment of 
plus two. Then when she gained three of the same kind, um, when she under turn, the, the order skills will be refreshed. This is from the talents. Okay, we'll be skipping this. Okay, so now we'll be talking about the tree C, how it works. So the tree C deals 1.6 times single target uh, damage and combining with the damage increment from her talent and also um, if you're able to combo with your max um, lucky buff stacks, the damage she deals is going to be quite visible and not to mention after battle she can move or she can retreat and then afterwards you can choose one of your lucky buff effect you want for two turns which will not be replaced and won't be used up oh and this additional this lucky buff effect that you have gained from your 3c uh, is different from the one from your talent so it does not occupy uh, any tree of the buff from the talent this is an additional fourth slot that you gain so it says you will let the lucky buff number to gain to reach fast stack so let's zoom in and check out this picture so okay the first the, as you can see one two three four four of icon are the sword logo which is the strong luck buff effect so you can gain up to four so the first three states attack plus 10 intelligence plus 10 cannot be dispelled however the fourth slot says uh, and, and compared to the other First tree, the first tree um, do not have a CD logo. The fourth one has a two-turn CD logo. Uh, it states plus ten percent attack intelligence cannot be, will not be used, and cannot be dispelled. So this is pretty cool. Um, it gives you a higher chance to get um, the two to three stacks of the same kind that you need at a much easier pace. However, um, based on what is written here, it still gives me, uh, based on my understanding, you have to go into battle, use the tree C, and then afterwards, you will gain this option. This means um, you will still need to put Arya, uh, Alia into danger because she will need to go into battle with enemies. After then, she will gain the buff that she needs. So may not be a good idea if it if, it, if it's um, exactly how it should work I guess we will need to find out more during the demo play oh and and sorry about it since she will now gain up to four um, stacks the fourth stacks of luck uh, lucky buff effect she will now be able to move up to four blocks because if she has four of the same kind of lucky buff effect the move against will she can gain is four so um, this is definitely you need the help of 3c so you can have a look And this gave her a higher chance to, again for the second part of her talent, is if she has three of the same kind of the lucky buff effect, 
um, it will help refresh all her damage skill CD. So this put her at a higher advantage unless sad to say you have very very bad luck. You only have like two of the same kind then um GG Nori. <laughs> And talking about her exclusive skill one, the times come Lux change because it has a CD of one turn. Uh, you can use it to, or you need to use up one of your lucky buff to use it. Then um, the main thing is this skill CD is one turn only, and after using, you'll be able to act again. This means that. Uh, every turn this skills get recycled as long as you cast the egg again so this is definitely her core skills you have to bring with you so it definitely occupy one of your skill slot now So alright, I think we've come to the end because she's more of a luck based character so she definitely is, you have more time to spend during PvE but you may not have that much of a time during PvP, some pros and cons and got to correct myself so the text um, I'll be writing after this is um, maximum of 4 stacks with 3C. So okay, we have reached um, greater and more understanding for how Alia gimmick works and the rest will be seen during the actual demo play. So not gonna leave this item build suggested for her. Breeze and Full Moon for the enchantment. So as you can see the points given for PvE is almost 5 stars. However, um, the points for PvP is very low, surprisingly. And on the left you can see all the items that is that are suggested. Um, for her to wear so that's it we'll come to the end if you like it do give it a like and subscribe for my video and watch to the end again for the translation that's why you guys is coming see you guys on part two of a video featuring another OP characters the elder sister of Alia Ilya goodbye